I'm going to talk about an aspect of Demon's Souls and Dark Souls that every single person who played those games loved, but for some reason after those games, FromSoft just completely abandoned. When playing Souls games, a majority of your time is split between two activities. One, exploring the level slash area, and two, fighting bosses. That first segment will be where the player spends most of their playtime. It's also the area of the game most negatively affected by this change. When you ask people, at what moment did you realise Dark Souls was going to be something special? An extremely common answer is the moment you go up the lift and you return to Firelink, and you realise how everything is interconnected and carefully designed. That immense sense of relief as you find yourself back at the safe comfort place, when for all you knew you were about to end up in some horrible place again. Here's a video of Nakey Jakey talking about that moment. Struggling my ass off through Undead Burg and Undead Parish and finally being rewarded by finding that shortcut back to Firelink Shrine and hearing that comforting music creep in, that, that seriously changed the trajectory of my firstborn son's life. He's, he's getting into brown now. It's a moment that gives you an appreciation for the game and how thoughtfully considered everything is. That it's not just some game shat out quickly to make money, it was something different. Judging by how many people name that one common experience as the moment they fell in love with the game, it might legitimately be the moment that set this series on the incredibly successful trajectory that it's had over the years. Sadly, that handcrafted, intricate level design that made so many people fall in love with this series to begin with has almost entirely vanished from the game. But when I talk about level design, I mean it from a gameplay standpoint. Obviously, aesthetically, it's absolutely gorgeous. Every single one. So to start off, fast travel is incredibly damaging to the level design. The developers have no reason to make everything interconnected and deliberately designed when you can just teleport anywhere at any point. So it's okay for everything to just be a straight line with a boss at the end. Dark Souls 2 is the best example of this. That game was fucking egregious when it came to the level design. Pointless shortcuts that do nothing. There are still well designed places in the subsequent Souls games, but the impact and the importance of things like shortcuts is massively lessened when you can just teleport home at any time. For an example, Blight Town in Dark Souls 1. Blight Town was horrible. Part of the reason it was so horrible was because you're stuck there. There's no get out of jail free card. You're not just a few button presses away from being at the safe, cozy hub with all the friendly NPCs. Nah, mate, you're in this horrible place and you're stuck there. You either have to walk your ass out or finish the level. It's like when you're finished shopping and you wish you could just teleport home. I know that Homeward Bones and the Dark Sign exist, but they only teleport you to the last bonfire that you rested at. So if you're in the middle of Blight Town, odds are the last bonfire you rested at is probably in Blight Town too. Also in Demon Souls, that item was incredibly expensive. 5k souls, which it doesn't sound like a lot if you've been playing Elden Ring, but in Demon Souls, 5k souls was a ton. I remember beating the horrible bastard man eaters gave you only 11 7k souls, that's two homeward bones. I know I keep bringing up demon souls, but I'm not actually that sure where it fits in the fast travel puzzle, because on one hand you did go back to the nexus quite a lot, but on the other hand there wasn't even bonfires in the game, so it's kind of like a weird outlier, I don't really know where to put it. I will say the emphasis on navigation and clever designed worlds and shortcuts, it was definitely there in demon souls. I think Elden Ring went in the opposite direction so hard that it looped back on itself and became interesting to explore again, but I still personally much prefer how it was before. Another huge reason fast travel is so damaging is to the game's immersion. When you can't just teleport out and there's no map, you really have to actually analyse your surroundings and remember where everything is, as if you're navigating in real life. You're navigating your surroundings just as much as your character is. This ends up being really important because it narrows the gap between the player and the character that you're playing as. When I first played Dark Souls as a baby, I walked around everywhere with my shield up because I was constantly thinking of potential threats. That's exactly what I would probably do in real life too. Think about the movie Titanic. Imagine if everyone on that ship could fast travel. As the ship begins to sink, nobody would give a shit because everyone would just teleport home. Part of the reason it's so scary is because there is no easy way out. You're in the middle of the fucking ocean. In Dark Souls 1, your inner monologue as you venture back to a previous location sounds like this. Okay, I turn left here, and then I go up the stairs, and then oh yeah, that's where the dragon put its feet on me. Whereas in Fast Travel Souls, your inner monologue sounds like this. Right, where's my phone? Like, that's it. I wonder if alt-tabbing will fuck up my game. Like, that's it. That's your inner monologue, you know? It takes away so much from the player. If you've ever thought to yourself, why doesn't this game have a mini-map? That's why. It's because it's up to you to navigate. You're the adventurer. You work it out, you little shit. You don't have an omniscient mini-map that knows exactly where everything is to hold your hand and take you where you need to go. I actually agree with FromSoft. Having a sat-nav on screen with GPS satellite positioning isn't great for immersion in a medieval setting. When it comes to Dark Souls 1, 
the general consensus is that after Anno Londo, the game kinda dips in quality. I'd put a good chunk of the blame on deadlines, but it is interesting that that's also the moment you get the ability to teleport. I feel like the first game probably did it best by holding off on teleportation until later. This meant that the first half of the game could be these intricately designed levels with shortcuts and looping paths going back on themselves, but you could still have a huge world and the convenience of teleportation when you've already explored everything. Having to travel the entire breadth of the map at the very end of the game would be annoying. And when you do get the Lord Vessel in Dark Souls, you can't teleport to every single bonfire, you can just teleport to a couple of the most important ones. I think that was a pretty good middle ground. You can't just teleport anywhere you want on the map, but it does make moving around a lot easier. Now I know some people are going to say, so just don't use fast travel then. The problem is, it's not something that just not using fast travel would actually remedy. The world has to be designed with no fast travel in mind or it just doesn't work. For example, in Elden Ring, imagine that I don't like the horse or the goat, whatever it is. That's like you saying, oh, so just don't ride him. Can you imagine how miserable that would be having to walk across this giant map? with no horse. There's a reason they added the horse. That's like saying if you're not a fan of the driving in GTA, ah, just walk. The game wasn't designed like that. It's the exact same for fast travel. The map needs to be designed around it or it's gonna be miserable. Dark Souls 1 and Demon's Souls both had these clever shortcuts that would save you so much time. They always gave you a huge sense of accomplishment when you found one because you know you've just made the level so much more forgiving. Say you're in the middle of exploring and you've got 30,000 souls on you. You could level up, but say you really want to buy something with those souls. You now need to journey through the world with those souls on you right up to the vendor. It adds an extra layer of tension to your exploration because you really don't want to die and risk losing all those souls. Every shitty rat that jumps out a box now means so much more to you. Everything just becomes a bit more engaging, a bit more exciting. You know how sometimes you wake up from a dream and as you try and remember the storyline of what happened in that dream, <laughs> the plot, the character arcs, there's bits and pieces missing. That's how the maps in these Fast Travel Souls games feel to me. Just kind of dreamlike, especially Elden Ring. What I mean is, like Dark Souls 1, I haven't played that game for a hundred years and yet I still remember so much about the level design because you had to know it in order to navigate it. There's no compass, there's no map. So if I asked you to navigate to Dark Root Garden from Firelink Shrine, you can probably remember the entire route in your head even if you haven't played for a long time. It's just so much more concrete in your mind because of the way you interact with it. To Elden Ring's credit, there are more traditional Souls areas, I think they're great, but these are still definitely more reminiscent of Dark Souls 2 or Dark Souls 3, because you can still just teleport out to any bonfire or grace at any time. So that was what demons and especially Dark Souls had that everyone loved, but has now been missing for a very long time. Thank you for watching, goodbye, subscribe too.